2 Thessalonians Introduction Author and Title Although some scholars today have questioned Pauline authorship of 2 Thessalonians, the unanimous testimony of the early church fathers supports Pauline authorship. The main reasons given by those who question Pauline authorship include 1. The eschatology of 2 Thessalonians is regarded as different from that of 1 Thessalonians. Specifically, the sudden and or imminent expectation of Christ's return in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to chapter 5 verse 11 is said to be inconsistent with the requirement in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 that specific signs must first take place. 2. The many commonalities between 1 and 2 Thessalonians are alleged to reflect literary dependence, which is regarded as inconsistent with Paul's authorship of both. 3. 2 Thessalonians supposedly has a cooler tone than 1 Thessalonians. 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 2 and chapter 3 verse 17 are thought to make best sense if written by a pseudonymous author. A careful evaluation of these objections, however, supports the conclusion that Paul was in fact the writer of 2 Thessalonians. The duplicity entailed in the forgery hypothesis, see chapter 3 verse 17, is hardly credible. In addition, the above objections can be readily refuted. 1. Both letters portray the second coming as an unwelcome and sudden surprise for unbelievers. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 2 to 3 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 to 12, but an anticipated and welcome event for those who are in Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 4 to 8, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 6 to 10 and chapter 2 verses 13 to 17. Moreover, certain events precede the Lord's return in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 as well as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 to 4 and chapter 2 verses 9 to 10 and imminence can be seen both in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 15 to 17 and in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7, chapter 1 verse 10 and chapter 2 verse 1. A sudden and imminent eschaton was regarded as compatible with signs in Jewish and early Christian writings, e.g. Matthew chapters 24 to 25. 2. Paul probably wrote 2 Thessalonians shortly after 1 Thessalonians and may have referred to a copy of it. 3. The idea of a colder tone in 2 Thessalonians is exaggerated, as discussed in the section Writing Style. 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 2 and chapter 3 verse 17 probably reflect Paul's concern that a forged letter may once have existed. Date. 2 Thessalonians was probably penned from Corinth in AD 49-51 shortly after 1 Thessalonians. Relationship to 1 Thessalonians Some have proposed that 2 Thessalonians preceded 1 Thessalonians, but 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 15 rules this out. Others have postulated that Paul wrote 2 Thessalonians for a Jewish group within the church, or even to the Philippians, but such hypotheses are in tension with 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 1. Probably Paul wrote 2 Thessalonians soon after dispatching 1 Thessalonians, because he had received a report. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 11 That the situation at Thessalonica had taken a surprising turn. Theme The theme of the second coming of Jesus dominates 2 Thessalonians just as it dominated 1 Thessalonians. Jesus' coming will be preceded by an apostasy or rebellion and by the revelation of the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. When Christ comes, he will defeat this rebellious world ruler, chapter 2 verse 8, and bring justice to oppressed Christians, and wrath upon their persecutors and to unbelievers in general, chapter 1 verses 5 to 10 and chapter 2 verses 9 to 15. Purpose The Thessalonian church had accepted the strange claim that the day of the Lord has come, chapter 2 verses 1 to 2. How could they have thought this? Some think they spiritualized the concept of the day of the Lord, but Paul's argumentation seems inconsistent with this. Others postulate that they thought that tribulation was part of the day of the Lord, and that it had begun, and consequently the second coming was imminent. However, Paul assumes that they knew the second coming occurred at the same time as the coming of the day of the Lord. As strange as it may seem, the Thessalonians may simply have fallen victim to a bizarre notion that the day of the Lord, understood in its normal sense, had come. As a result, they were shaken and frightened. Chapter 2 verse 2 The Thessalonians were also undergoing persecution. Chapter 1 verse 4 Which may have exacerbated their confusion about the end. Furthermore, the community had a problem with idols refusing to work. Chapter 3 verses 6 to 15 
They may have stopped working to await and preach the second coming, but evidence for connecting the problem in this way is lacking. Lazy Christians may simply have been exploiting wealthy Christians' generosity in order to avoid work. Paul wrote to Thessalonians 1. To reassure those terrified by the thought that the day of the Lord had come. Chapter 2 verse 1 to chapter 3 verse 5. 2. To strengthen the Thessalonians in the face of unremitting persecution. Chapter 1 verses 3 to 12. 3. To deal with the problem of some of the church members refusing to earn their own living. Chapter 3 verses 6 to 15. Summary of Salvation History Christians are to wait expectantly for the second coming of their Saviour, Jesus Christ. Writing Style Second Thessalonians follows the customary order of a New Testament letter. It begins with a salutation and ends with a prayer and benediction. Between these bookends is found the type of informal letter that meanders through a series of topics in the way that present-day informal letters often do. There is the usual mixture of personalia, references to the letter writer's relationship with his recipients, public information, and Christian doctrine and practical application. In contrast to the warm and effusive tone of 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians includes some blunt commands as Paul addresses bad behaviour and bad thinking. Further, this letter is noteworthy for the author's tough-mindedness in predicting judgment on the ungodly, and rebuking church members who behave and think incorrectly. Still, there is a regular swing back and forth between reproof and warm encouragement. Key Themes 1. God's righteous judgment will be fully manifest when Jesus returns. At that time, unbelievers will be condemned and believers will be saved. 2. Christians will share Christ's glory. 3. The lawless one's revelation and humanity's final rebellion are prerequisites for Jesus' second coming. 4. The lawless one will deceive all those who have rejected the gospel, guaranteeing their condemnation when Jesus returns. 5. Christians must not exploit the charity of fellow Christians. Outline The letter is relatively brief, yet meanders through a number of topics, expanding on much of what Paul had already written in a previous letter to Thessalonica. For the purpose of study, it is divided into six main sections, most of them quite brief. 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. Salutation. Paul identifies himself as the author, along with Silas and Timothy, and the Thessalonians as being the intended recipients, calling for God's blessing upon them. 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 3 to 12. Thanksgiving and comfort for the persecuted Thessalonians. Paul starts by giving thanks for the perseverance of the church, acknowledging how he boasts of their resolute defence of the gospel amid their continuing persecution. Paul assures them that their trials and tribulation are signs that God will come in judgment to vindicate them, and provide justice when he judges those who have opposed them. He goes on to describe the differing outcomes for those who are in Christ and those who are not. 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1-17 to refuting the false claim about the day of the Lord. It seems that a false report, perhaps a forged letter, had been circulated among them to say that Christ had returned, and it seemed that they had somehow missed out on the promises of the Gospel. Paul refutes such claims, and goes on to describe what must first occur before Jesus will return. His primary focus is on the man of lawlessness, who will lead a rebellion against God and his people. Despite the evil this will bring, Paul assures them that Christ will defeat them when he returns. Paul's reassurance is confirmed by words of encouragement that remind them they are chosen by God for salvation through Jesus, providing they persevere in their faith. Paul ends the section with a resounding prayer of praise and thanksgiving for the church. 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 1 to 5. Request for prayer. Paul then requests that they pray for his team in Corinth, asking that God will protect them from their evil opponents. He then returns to encouraging them by clearly stating that the Lord will protect them. 5. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 6 to 15. Warning against idleness. Paul warns the believers to have nothing to do with those in the church who were refusing to work, but were expecting the others to support them. Paul teaches that it is important for all people, insofar as they are able, to support themselves with the labour of their own hands. 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 16 to 18 Final greetings and benediction 
Paul then picks up the stylus to write his final words to the church. The introduction to 2 Thessalonians ends.